This is the uh, back porch where it's a nice day and it's good for working on books. And there is the brush. Now we're out here with this brand new book. We're going to start with some gestural marks. And we're going to leave a page or two blank at the beginning here so we can decide how we want to start. And like a calligraphy, we're just making a mark like that getting started. You can see this is bleeding through some. Now we want to use that. I'm working wet. I'm going to use this back here. Let these marks speak, see if something starts going which looks, yes, well there's sort of a gestural thing, like that circular motion. Now, we try a different one. Okay, another that way, accentuate these marks here, now we'll try this way, back down here a little, over here, let's get this side too. Now you can see that there's sort of a rhythm, a conceptual flow starts going. The idea is to try out all the ideas. Trying out all the ideas. So we start to get this, these marks working. I like to keep it active. I like to leave spaces in between the marks because I know I'm going to come in later with more color. So now I think I have about enough with this color. So now I can either start working in right away. Uh, you see what happens there with another color. Suddenly becomes a whole new ball game. Here's a page that barely has something going there. We're gonna use this color to get back into it. Get back into these gestural strokes. See these other gestures on top of it are saying something similar, but they're moving around it. They're opening up the space already. Opening up the space and creating a dynamic tension between these different structural gestural marks. Yes, that's interesting already. We don't even have that much going on and we're getting some action here. This is like calligraphy, except it's more like Franz Klein, who did this a lot, this kind of gestural stroke. And of course, the Chinese and Japanese artists throughout the centuries. Now, I'm going to go back with another color suddenly. I just want to see how this works differently, completely differently. So I'm working back wet. 
and to here this is a more translucent color I like the way that's working but I'll skip a few pages I'm echoing the marks that are already there still leaving space for more color because we want to use that white of the page keep it free so that more colors can work into it see just a little bit there you don't want to overload it skip a few pages here this looks interesting look at that there's a splash of color huh so just this page and I think we'll find one here and maybe we'll do a double feature page we'll activate both sides of the page this way we're unifying the page now that is a beginning on a brand new book now here this book was started before and it is now dried so I can work into it with a slightly different character see the strokes sit up on the page more they don't soak out they don't blend with the other watery substances so what I have is a situation where suddenly the mark as I put it down is holding its shape this is a different quality now over here the same things going on with this it's a different quality working wet and working dry so Now we can try laying in an area. See, suddenly we're putting in an entire tonality of color, moving in this entire side of the page here. We'll do it similarly over here. We've just dominated this whole piece of the page here with this color now suddenly we're in this world of red of pink we can do the same thing with another color I'm getting into a yellow world here the uh, strokes underneath because they're dry are going to hold up to this new soaking here so now you see we've gone in where it was all white color now because we're working dry onto a page previously worked suddenly we have that new kind of control here on this page i can do a combination i can start to get an area working up here and then down at the bottom just have a little stroke so there are all these combinations start to get an area over here then come in with another color over here so now we start having the saturated overlapping of color this is a nice effect which can uh, ultimately saturate an entire page and give it some real character this is what we're looking for is character saturation I think I'll leave this one with sort of uh, these soft colors going on here come back to that hmm here's an opportunity seems a little too similar let's try a little bit of this okay that's better well 
Well, the wind has two sides to it. On one hand, it's helpful in drawing the books, working. This is primarily why, besides getting out on a nice day, using the sun and uh, moving atmosphere helps dry out the pages more quickly. Which is something that we often want. Just gonna let that soak in for a second there before I turn the page. Uh, another method we can stop this color from bleeding through two ways. One is by putting it on more dryly, not soaking it so much, and the other way is by putting a blocking page like a bristle board or stiff paper behind the page and then that just stops it dead in its tracks. But a lot of the time we want to use this effect to our advantage. Those strokes I just put on, they were put on really quite dry, so they're not going anywhere. On the other hand, now this I'm soaking in, this color, and it's going to bleed through. But we know this, so we're making it work for us. We turn the page and here's our color coming through. These books have a hundred pages. Each page has two sides. I'm mentioning this because when you do one of these books, you're gonna be doing a lot of work. You're not doing a little bit, you're doing a lot. But this is what we want. This means in a compact space here, we can continue to work for a long time. It's like having many lives. This is our Akashic record of uh, art. And we have many lives in these pages. So there we are. The beginnings of another art book. We tie it up here. Book, brush, pigment. And there we are.